This word is not for everybody. Seek the Lord for confirmation. G'day, I'm Rachel and this is First Fruit Taz. If this is the first time you've seen this channel, you might want to go back to my previous video. It tells you a lot about this channel. This channel is not about putting out prophetic words frequently so much as connecting members of the remnant and not every member of the remnant but those people who are led to this channel. So be sure to check out that previous video. I had not planned to come on here and make a video. I popped out a bit later than I normally would to the hardware store with my daughter to purchase something for my business and she likes to choose colour cards in the paint section as plenty of children do and she'd made all her choices which of course were quite bright and there was a colour that caught my eye and or it was actually a range of colours and I started to walk away but Holy Spirit just drew me back and of course my mind's going why would I need this color card uh, you know is there some sort of craft project that I'm gonna wish that I'd picked it up and I went back to the range of cards and went to the one that I thought that was being highlighted and it had the word resilient now it's not spelt correctly it, this is marketing for you they usually do change the spelling slightly and when I looked at that card, I knew that God was going to have a word for you. So here I am recording a word and I do hope to share it tonight. I have no idea what Holy Spirit is going to share and that's the way it is when I turn on this microphone. I don't work from notes. Um, I just work with what the good Lord gives me. So let's get started. I'm actually going to start by praying in tongues because God often gives me revelation when I pray in tongues. Holy Spirit. We hail as a God at a hila, boja, grant a hila. Oh, he hail as a God at a hila, hila. Oh, he hail at a hila. swig of water Holy Spirit reminded me that somebody who I met through YouTube who is very close to my heart has an incredible testimony um, and I'm not going to give details just to say that it is one of the big promises and it has been fulfilled and there are a lot of people um, will be seeing that testimony I'm sure sometime soon and while I was praying, God was talking to me a lot about testimonies. He was showing me the cruise ship, which typically when he talks to me about the cruise ship, he's talking, yeah, <laughs> he's cutting in now. He's talking about the collective, the remnant members of his household, he's saying. And that we're, we're together. The cruise ship signifies that we are a network that is together. Oh wow, okay, so I've never seen it before quite that way. So he's shown me in the past how our network is important, 
For example, one of us might have financial overflow while another one is in need and we can support each other in that way. It might be that one is, is needing a word and another is able to provide. And that's why God has led me to facilitate connections and networks among my viewers. And again, if you want details on how to connect with other viewers and myself, go to that previous video. God was saying that there will be big testimonies in this hour and they feature last he's saying last minute enterprises they're going to be those sorts of testimonies where you've just about given up and I hear um, there's a lot of you are actually in touch with me some of you on a daily basis <laughs> and I hear from you and I hear you know those who've just had enough of waiting had enough of waiting the logic isn't there you know it's a bit like this this piece of paper with the word resilient on it that I almost walked past um, we're waiting for things and it doesn't make sense we don't see what's going on um, in the natural we don't see um, the promise being made manifest and we can just get to a point where we've just had enough and we're ready to pack that promise from God up in a box, label it, shelve it and get on with our lives. And for some of us, that means we are still open to the promise and available to what God's doing. And for others, we could be closing doors and that is not what God wants in this season. He's saying to us, hold on, hold on. He will step in at the last minute. Now, this echoes a word that I heard yesterday. God allows us to wait. I think I can't remember who it was, and I apologize for that because that's rather rude, but I'll often listen to videos as I drive and um, instead of listening to the radio. And so I'm not seeing who, who is speaking. I'm not able to go back and, and show some loving either. Oh, well, I could go back through my history. That's another story. I'm getting sidetracked. Um, Holy Spirit. So this this person posed the question to God, why is it that some of us are still hurting? We're supposed to be approaching the promised land, but we're still hurting. Um, I'm just trying to make sense of this. I'm, <laughs> it's the end of a very long day, Holy Spirit. And basically the answer is that as God comes in with a solution at the last minute, everyone will see it could only be God. And we will know it could only be God. Um, I don't know the full story of this testimony, but I know that this person about a week ago was feeling so down, really feeling like this just was not going to happen, doubting themselves, did I really hear from God? Um, and for anyone who gets in that state of mind where they're doubting and did I really hear from God, Go back to when you first received that promise. What was the what was the context of that promise? Um, if you received that revelation personally, then there's an excellent chance that you heard correctly. If you um, went to someone who's almost like a fortune teller, then yeah, maybe not. Maybe they were just playing playing to you. So use some discernment. But for most of us, if we go back to the original revelation of that promise because many of us have had it confirmed over and over again since if we go back to that original context of that promise being received we know without doubt that that was a promise from God so this person had had really reached a point where they were like nah, this is so hard is this is this really from God it's just not coming together and then completely unexpectedly um, the promise came to pass and it, it was just a wonderful thing to see and it's been very encouraging to me and I'll be so excited when the rest of you can learn this news as well. Um, so yeah, he was showing me the cruise ship and we're to remember and, and I believe that he's really saying that as our promises come to pass, that's when we're really going to um, realize the value of the cruise ship, the value of being a, a network of people who have everything we need within the network. And he's, he's showing me right now job offers. You know, some of us will be employing other members of the remnant 
um, other, you know, we might find funding. So, for example, there was a remnant member who had government funding who was paying me to provide services. So, the government was funding funding me through them. Um, there's so many different ways God can set this up, but basically, He wants you to consider whatever needs you have. It's taken into account within the remnant. And so as the shaking really happens, um, as the shaking really unfolds on planet Earth and around us, as the earthly systems start to crumble, if you step outside the remnant to meet a need, you might be making yourself vulnerable. So just be mindful to to go first to the remnant members and just see, um, okay, so here's something God's highlighting is that some of you have projects and there are members within the the community within this network who have skills and connections that can help you see that um, assignment through to fruition and that's not just oh that's nice I've met someone here who can help remember that these are people who are led by Holy Spirit okay so you're talking about getting support, getting help, getting contribution to your project or assignment from somebody who is led by Holy Spirit. That's huge. If I had to choose between two people, I would choose the one that's led by Holy Spirit every time. It doesn't matter how funny looking they are, how funny looking they sound, how broken they might seem. I would go for the one who is led by Holy Spirit every time. God is saying promises are fulfilled in this hour. It is a yes and amen. He's saying speak life. And when he says that, it's huge. He's saying speak life and speak it big. Say it like you mean it. Say it like you mean it. And then go and celebrate as though it's already in your hand. Dance like nobody's watching. That's what he's saying. And he finally he's saying be ready to stand up and testify. And what I feel he's saying is some of us could, it could be a meditative exercise to close your eyes and just imagine that you already have what it is that he's promised. The promise fulfilled and you are testifying. You might be, you know, at the front of a church and testifying. You might be at the Christmas gathering for your family and you are testifying. Um, you know, you might be in a waiting surgery, um, waiting room at a surgery and um, the little old lady next to you struck up a conversation and that's your chance to testify. And God is saying, be ready to testify. Stand, stand strong. And he's saying this is one of the meanings of, of his word as a sword and testimony. It is such a powerful weapon to bring in believers what he's saying is that he's actually given giving the body of the remnant a, a a big repertoire a large repertoire so our our stories when we talk about promises fulfilled it won't be oh here's another marriage testimony here's another god gave me a house testimony people will start to yearn to hear these stories because they're so profound but they're hearing it from the horse's mouth. They're hearing it from the person who received the blessing. And because we're approachable, we are believable. Um, if you're hearing a testimony from someone who's very polished, you might doubt that what they went through was as bad as what they said because it's hard to believe that someone who is polished um, could have had anything but a silver spoon in their mouth. As I say, I never know what I'll be sharing um, when I'm in flow. Holy Spirit was saying, watch the Golden Gate Bridge sway and crumble. I don't know if that's symbolic or literal. Obviously, you would want to seek confirmation. Um, he's saying that we're going to see things, the likes of which we've never seen before. And... You know, he's saying humanity has actually seen some really serious shifts and change and dynamics on the planet um, through geography, through weather. And he says we have become so complacent. 
And something that often occurs to me is we've become so soft. You know, we have to actually pay money, leave our house and go to a gymnasium to get exercise, to maintain a basic level of health and fitness. Not so long ago, most people were growing their own food and they would stay fit by digging the ground. They'd stay fit by digging up the potato harvest. Um, They'd stay fit by carting their water to the house. They'd stay fit by carting the eggs to market to barter for something else. We are so, so soft now. And what concerns me is I'm 45 years old and I remember the stories from the elderly in the the elderly from my childhood. But you know, some of you guys are in your 20s and I don't know what you've been taught at school. I don't know what you've been told by families. But I think particularly with what we call commercial TV in Australia. It's, it's that woke thing. It's that, that wakening thing. It's so easy for the average Joe Blow to sit and watch commercial TV that is mind-numbing, that teaches them nothing, that gives them zero awareness. Um, it's fake news. It's totally constructed um, entertainment and its educational value is zero let alone spiritual content so this is what concerns me is and I think it's because of you guys because of this channel one of the things that God has often placed on my heart is that we're losing a lot of the skills that are necessary for survival you know we're living at a time where most children do not know where eggs and milk come from and we have to teach them we have to show them we have to sing songs you know most children don't get an opportunity to go and collect an egg from a chicken and I'm just I'm going to share this story my youngest daughter was about 18 months of age and we visited friends and we were going to collect the eggs and the lady said to her you can pick up the eggs and she she put the eggs in my daughter's hand and eggs are food so she thought it was to feed the chooks and she put the eggs on the ground for the chooks and we said to her no the eggs the chooks make the eggs and I took her home <laughs> And I brought up on YouTube a video of a chicken laying an egg. So you could actually see the egg coming out of the chicken. And I wish I had had the camera trained on her face because the response from her, the little jaw dropped. And her mind was just absolutely blown that, that these eggs actually come out of chicken's bottoms. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's the basics my ex-brother-in-law shared a story recently of how he was hanging out with friends in a little country house and they were going hungry. No one had any money for food. All I had was a bit of butter. And he showed them that the yard was full of potatoes and all I had to do was dig up these potatoes and cook them and they had this big, relatively nutritious meal. You know, you've got your fibre and a certain amount of protein um, and plenty of energy in a potato. Um, so this, you know, this is what it's come to. We have become so far removed. And I'm sorry this has become a bit of a teaching. But yeah, we've become so far removed from real life. We've become so far removed from reality. And it means that as this amazing shaking, this incredible shaking, um, John Paul Jackson's perfect storm, as it plays out, God just show me that some people are going to sit and starve while there is food under their feet. Some people are going to sit and starve while they're only literally a couple of feet away from a good meal, just for lack of understanding, lack of knowledge. Because, you know, this last 50 years, the whole world has 
made a point of training children up to operate computers and that has been the primary focus of education over the last 50 years. So Holy Spirit, can we get back on track? <laughs> I'm going to sing tongues again. God was showing me a banana and he showed me in the past um, that when he gives that to me, what he means in this case and oftentimes is that he's actually sending a curveball. He's sending us the unexpected. And this testimony that I mentioned at the start of this video, I'm sure it was unexpected. I know that where that person was a week ago, they did not expect to be standing where they are right now in a week's time. Absolutely not. And I'm believing for some big promises in my own life. And, you know, I see little snippets of how they could um, come to manifest in the natural, nothing concrete, um, but God is laying the foundations for all of us. He was showing me a train and the train is called Promises Fulfilled. It is coming into the station loaded up with goodies for all of us, loaded up with those promises fulfilled. And he wants us to remember that once those promises are fulfilled, things are gonna move really quickly. Um, he's saying with a rapidity Hitherto un, unforeseen, unforetold, extreme, extreme. And he's, show, <laughs> he's showing me something taking off and just leaving dust behind it. Holy Spirit. Um, my daughter and I watched Wally the other day about the robot that was left to clean up Earth. Um, I don't know how many of you have seen it, but um, yeah, I think that that sort of action of a, a robot just sort of accelerating really rapidly, leaving just leaving the dust going flying. That's what he's showing me. Expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected. Have your hands up, ready to receive. And he's saying, sing praise and worship me. Not because it's going to unlock things, but because it's going to lift your spirits. It's going to lift your spirits. So he wants me to share a little testimony here because I was thinking, oh, what testimony do I have to share? Because he's, he's saying, you know, share your testimonies, people, as they come in. Um, my daughter has government funding and I thought that I couldn't use a big chunk of it, um, which is actually available for certain grocery products. I thought that I couldn't access that until December and they phoned me about three days ago and they said, do you have any questions? Because we're 44% of the way through the year and um, I maybe used 10% of the money. And I had a little chat with them and they said, no, no, you can use that money now. <laughs> so I've just gone on a little spending spree because I need to spend it and then um, they will rebate me. Um, they'll rebate the money. So that's that's just one little testimony is that that was a financial resource that I didn't know that I could tap into and suddenly it became available. Like this was a phone call that I wasn't looking for. I hadn't reached out to them. It When that phone call came in, I had no idea who was phoning and certainly not that it was to give me permission to spend this money. 
um, and the money, it's $2,600. The problem's not, not having enough money now. The problem is knowing what I can actually spend it on um, and spending it appropriately. Praise God. Holy Spirit. Um, he's saying for each of us that he's opening our books of life. Um, we, we have our own books in heaven. And he's running his fingers through through what's written in those books and he is conferring with Jesus um, to come up with strategies to to spend, to release. He's saying like, you know, there are funds in heaven for us and he's saying it's a similar system. There's a budget that he wants to spend on each of us and he's trying to find the best way to do that. He's trying to find the most opportune moments to unlock those resources. Um, Holy Spirit. And they're just, he's just showing me that it's a really well thought out decision. They're putting a lot of consideration into how to release the blessings, when to release the blessings. And he's just showing me, he's reminding me of, I don't know, I think it's a chaos theory. Um, but excuse my ignorance if I'm wrong. Um, the theory of a butterfly flapping its wings in one country can can result in a dust storm in another country, which sounds ridiculous, but, um, you know, the finest detail out of place can make a big difference to what manifests. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> He's saying it could be the difference between having a family sedan and having a sports car. And... Until I spoke those words, it didn't cross my mind. But as I spoke those words, I'm like, wow. You could look at that as, oh, I'd be blessed more to have a sports car than a family sedan. But what's the family sedan symbolic of? The sports car might be symbolic of being a successful single person. The family sedan is symbolic of being blessed with a family, of being blessed with children of being blessed with a purpose that's eternal. If you don't go ahead and have children, what's your legacy? Where's your legacy? When you have children, and I I don't, I I just want to show some sensitivity to those who haven't had children um, or believe that they can't. Um, And I want to pray right now, Holy Father, in Jesus' mighty name, if there are wombs that are that are locked and are supposed to be unlocked, then I pray in agreement with those people that those wombs be unlocked in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. I decree and declare a breakthrough in this season in the realms of family, in the realms of childhood. I decree and declare new freedoms, new freedoms for families, new freedoms for children. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. I don't feel I'm meant to add details to that because it's going to mean different things to different families. Thank you, God. Um, I'm thinking of uh, an elderly person. Um, Initially, it was a woman. Yeah, I think it is a woman and just a woman. Maybe a male. A male sort of, I feel like that's there in the background, Holy Spirit. And... Um, I feel like for somebody there's some urgency to spend some time with their elderly and God's saying get to know your heritage um, because it's that's going to unlock things. I believe that many of my viewers like me actually have family histories that relate to leadership it might, um, yeah, land ownership, God's saying. And so we, wow, our families can fall so far. I grew up with a poverty mindset and God showed me that my mother, um, Jezebel spirit, used my mother to come against my father's bloodline. And we had um, very wealthy relatives in England And yet we always had this narrative as I grew up of doing it tough, of not having enough money, of having to beg to the schools, 
for money when I know there were children much poorer than us at those schools. But my family would be begging. My family would be singing this song of lack. And if we look at our family history, many of us will realise that we actually have a family history of abundance. We have a family history of well-being. We may, you know, I have an, an Olympic an Olympic um, competitor in my recent family history. Maybe there may be more than one. Um, there's a famous artist in my family history, John, St- John Spencer Stanhope. Um, I'm just trying to think who else there is, but, you know, there's this long history on my father's side of well-doing um, people very senior in the military. We had two, I think they were great aunts or great, great aunts who, both women, they worked at Bletchley Park decoding um, the German, the Nazi coding machine. I can't remember what it was called. These are really accomplished people in my family's history and you will have them too. But somewhere along the line, somewhere along the line, Jezebel just gives a little nudge, nudges these narratives of success and purpose, these stories that tell you that your family has a role to play in eternity and it hasn't stopped yet, it hasn't finished yet, it hasn't been completed yet, that your bloodline still has work to do. That narrative which should have you standing tall and proud and on the lookout for what's your assignment, what's the role that you play in the story of your bloodline in in God's big plan, in the big scheme of things. I'm forgetting where I started that sentence. (laughs) You get the point. Many of you... I get a feeling like we should be at rest at the moment, certainly at peace because we can trust God. And for those who have trouble with that, do look up the audio books about Reese Howells and George Mueller on YouTube. Please excuse my croaky voice. It's getting late at night now. Um, And those books are great for building faith. And just ask God to author your faith. And that might look like a little bit of testing, a little bit of hardship so that God can come in and rescue you at the last minute. So he can be your provider at the last minute. So he can be your saviour at the last minute. So he can be your matchmaker at the last minute. Again, I'm forgetting where I started that sentence. (laughs) I probably should get to bed. Um, Holy Spirit. He says, I'm a change maker. And he's just showing this huge wind just sweeping the whole planet. And because it's a spiritual wind, it's not affecting other people, but it's affecting us. So you've got the shaking that's going to shake the rest of the world, but we will still be standing. But then there's this wind of change that is is blowing through the whole atmosphere of the whole planet and it's going to touch the lives of every member of the remnant. And I don't think this is highlighted scripturally, but as members of the remnant, we are individuals representing a bloodline. So I see this almost visually as a horizontal line of members of the remnant and then I see their bloodlines going vertically up into the past and vertically downwards into the future. Wombs be open in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. He's showing me a big green leaf and I'm just trying to unpack that a bit. Um, he's talking about vegetation, he's talking about freshness, he's talking about a launching pad. It makes me think of a frog about to launch off a lily pad 
and he's saying into the unknown and to many of us he's going to have us go forward we're going to know that we're being blessed we're going to know that we're on assignment but we're not we're still not going to see through it's like there's curtains we can see so far and then beyond that we can't see and we just have to trust God for this we just have to go forth with God he's showing me someone almost on a raft um, and just making their way on that raft and they're just going off into the deep blue and they don't really know where they're going but they're trusting God they're trusting that 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 sea will stay calm that the skies will stay blue and and they're praising God as they go because they know he's bringing me back to when I picked up this piece of paper with the word resilient on it I didn't know why I was picking up that paper. I didn't until I saw what was written on it. Then I knew. Um, but I turned around. I changed direction. I went back to that paper. I walked to that paper and I picked it up. Willingly, in obedience, with no idea why I was going to do that. No idea what use that paper would be it's just a little piece of paper but it has the word resilient on it and I'm I feel that God wants to speak on that word specifically right now God is saying your resilience is in me when I am made manifest in your life and he's showing me that you know his spirit but he can become tangible in your house um, you can have items in your house that you you only have because of obedience to God um, I'm thinking of the pastels that I have for example I I was driving home I've shared this before but I will share it again I was driving home across the bridge to cross the river and I just had a vision of those pastels and I knew it was a specific set and I thought it was $120. And I didn't have a lot of money on me at the time. But out of obedience, I turned around and I went to that shop and I went to buy that pack that I'd had the vision of. They're extremely good quality. It was a nice um, timber case. But it was $170. And I'm standing there going, God, if I spend that, that's all my money gone. And I know I've got costs coming up. And then I just, it was self-talk. I said to myself, this is clear. There's no doubt God wants me to purchase these. And I'm just going to trust God that, you know, things will work out. I went to the counter and by the time I pulled out my bank card to pay, Somebody had donated $50 to me. So God is highlighting the resilience that we have by trusting him. And our emotional resilience grows as our faith grows. And you can pray to God. I'm going to pray now and you can pray in agreement if you like. Holy Father in Jesus' mighty name. I bring these people to you and I pray, God, I, oh, I can feel Holy Spirit. <laughs> I pray that you author their faith, that you increase their faith, increase their faith to the point that, increase our faith, Lord, to the point that we can speak out in public, trusting for your will to be done, that we can go out in public and perform signs and wonders in your name author our faith grow our faith holy father grow our faith so that we can manifest the miracles that we are supposed to be able to manifest those are those are gifts and abilities that you have given us that you have promised us and we have them what we lack is the faith the faith to perform these miracles, the faith to usher these things into reality, 
So Lord, we just pray. We lay everything down at your feet. We trust you with everything that we have. Everything and everybody. Everything and everybody in our household, our bills, our working life. And we pray, God, that you just strengthen our faith so that we can turn everything around with your leading so that we can speak your words and see the miracles manifest in real time. And we thank you, Holy Father, that you have put this on our hearts, that you've put this on our radar, that you've taught us about these principles and that we are going to experience this, not just in our lifetime, but in this season. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you, God. I praise you, Holy Father. I am going to call it a night. My viewers can connect on Facebook. It's First Fruit Taz Group. You are more than welcome to join us there. We also have Orchard, which is a completely independent platform where we can collaborate and connect. It's well worth joining and it doesn't cost you anything. Email me if you would like to be added to Orchard. I do have some videos about Orchard in my video list if you would like to go there and check that out. We have God calling nearly every day and that is scheduled on Orchard. So you will find that on a calendar on Orchard and if you can't find it, just ask somebody there. And every Australian Sunday morning, we gather for a Sunday service, which tends to go for seven to nine hours. And so um, depending where you are in America, that starts at 5 to 8 p.m. And it starts in the wee hours of the morning in um, Africa and Europe. Um, not a perfect time for everybody, but I did my best um, in choosing that time. But you are more than welcome to join us for that. We connect for that and God Calling, which is, um, I didn't explain what God Calling is. We basically gather in small groups and prophesy to one another, give words of encouragement to one another. And that usually lasts a few hours. Um, with the Sunday service, you do not have to be there for the whole seven to nine hours. Come in and leave as works for you. Both of those are conducted on blue jeans. Thank you and God bless. Holy Father, I thank you for placing this video before those you intend to receive it. Financial support is welcome and donations can be made by selecting the link in the details box below this video.